Okay, in the previous video we have seen some of the basic possibilities of the scene view. The scene view is very important because it is going to help us to create something essential in Unity, the scenes, okay? In the scene view, now we have only this cube, and as you can see, we have selected the translation tool. So this means that we can move our cube in any of the main axis, okay? Okay, so when moving the cube or when performing transformation on the cube, we have two possibilities. We can use the global coordinate system, which is the one it is now selected, as you can see in this button, it says global. This means that this gizmo, these arrows, okay, they are aligned with the global coordinate system of the scene. Okay, so this is one of the possibilities, but if we select, if we switch to local, this means that we are able to move the object using what we call the local coordinate system. What is the local coordinate system? The local coordinate system is a coordinate system that belongs to the object. So for example, if now, if I rotate the object, as we are going to see, and I select again the translation tool, you're going to see that this local coordinate system is different to the global coordinate system, okay? So the global and the local coordinate systems now are different. So this is very useful. Sometimes you want to move the object using the local coordinate system or the global coordinate system, depending on the situation. You can switch them using this button we have here, okay? This is going to be uh, obvious whenever you rotate the object. When you rotate the object, you are going to see that the local and global coordinate system are going to be different. Every object in Unity is going to have a local coordinate system, and you can switch this local or global whenever you want to manipulate your object, okay? Next to it, we have center or pivot, okay? Center means that, for example, when we want to rotate our object, this object is going to be rotated around the geometrical center of the object. If you select pivot, this means that we are going to rotate the object around the pivot. What is the pivot? The pivot is a point that normally the designer of the object has created, has indicated, in a specific position. In this case, the pivot is exactly the center of the object. But when we import 3D objects from other softwares, other applications, maybe, depending on uh, the designer, you are going to see that the pivot is going to be a different point. And sometimes it is interesting to rotate or to scale around this pivot instead of the center. Okay, so this is the object of this option we have here. Okay, now we are going to do something much more complex. Imagine that this cube is a brick of a wall. So imagine that we want to create a wall. So what I'm going to do now is to start over. So I'm going to create a new cube, okay? Of course, as you can see in the transform, component in the inspector, we can see the position, the rotation, and the scale of this cube. And we can change these values numerically, okay? So we can put something, of course, here in order to change the position, the rotation, or the scale. So it is not necessary to do it visually. Sometimes it's going to be much more accurate to put some values, fixed values, in the transfer component of the object. Okay, so now imagine that we want to create a cube. Okay, one possibility we have, of course, is if this we want to create a wall using this cube, one possibility is to create another cube. Okay, so now we have two cubes. Imagine they are bricks of a wall. So now using the translation tool, okay, we can move this second one, okay, and put it next to the other. The problem we have is when creating a wall, the problem we have is that, well, we don't want 
gaps, we don't, want, we don't want overlaps between these two bricks, okay? The overlaps and the gaps are going to be uh, problematic, they are going to be annoying, because sometimes even using the physics engine, we are going to have uh, many problems, okay? So it's not just something uh, visually uh, unpleasant for the player, sometimes it's going to have some uh, drawback, okay, when, uh, when we execute our game. So we have to avoid these gaps over, or overlaps. How can we do that, okay? Well, one way of doing that is going to edit and to use the snap settings options we have here. So we can use the snap tools, as we are going to see. By default, as you can see, we have 111. This means that when we use the snapping tool, we are going to move in one unit. In Unity, the units are meters, okay? So this means that if we use the snap tools, we are going to be moving one, one meter, okay? This is very important, okay? We can select, for example, this, uh, this cube. As you can see in the Z coordinate, we have now 1, 3, 8, 5. And we can say snap all axes, or we can snap one of the specific axes. And as you can see, because one is the unit, we are forcing this cube to uh, to be in a multiple okay value from one in this case. Okay, this is one possibility of this tool. Okay, to force to force uh, to snap okay one of the three axes or all the axes. Another possibility is we can put here something. In this case, we are going to, to leave the default value, one meter. And when moving a cube, we can press the command key in Mac or control key in Windows. And by pressing this key, now when we move, we are going to be moving, okay? We are going to be moving one meter exactly. Okay, so again, we can select the snap setting tools, we can snap this object, okay, and now we can, you see, we can be sure that we are moving one meter, okay, in each direction. One meter, one meter, okay, because the cube, the size of the cube is one meter, we are going to be sure that there are no gaps or overlaps between these two cubes. We can use another option we have in the editor, in the same view, is to use Ctrl D in Windows or Command D in Mac in order to create a duplicate. So we select this one and with Command D, okay, or Ctrl D in Windows, we can create a duplicate. Now, if we press Ctrl or Command, we can move, you see, and now we are sure that we have now three bricks of the wall where we don't have overlaps or we don't have gaps between them. Okay, I'm going to repeat the process. Control D, Command D. And now I press Control Command and, okay, we can put another one here. Control D, Command D, Command, another one. And we can repeat this process, okay? So in this way we can, as you can see, we can create a kind of wall, okay, using these bricks, these cubes, and we can be sure that we don't have gaps or overlaps between them. Something very important when we are creating complex scenes. There's another possibility, okay? There's another possibility, and this is what I'm going to do now. Imagine that now I'm going to move it freely, okay, in a specific position. There's another tool, it is called the snapping tool, okay? Uh, in this tool, we are going to be able to match, okay, one vertex, okay, into another vertex. So sometimes this is going to be very useful to be sure that one specific vertex of an object matches another vertex of another object, okay? So this is really difficult if you want to do it visually, okay, even numerically can be also very difficult, but we have this snapping tool we are going to use now. 
This snapping tool works in a very easy way. You have just to press the key V, okay? And keep it pressed, okay? And now you can move, okay? And by moving, you can select the origin vertex, okay? In this case, for example, this one, okay? Now I can press the left button, and now I can move into the other vertices of other objects, as you can see. In this case, for example, here, okay? And I can release all the keys, okay? And now I'm sure that I have put the vertex of this object in the exact position of the vertex of this object. So they match perfectly, okay? So they match perfectly. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to create a, another duplicate of this object. I'm going to move it freely, okay? I'm going to put it, for example, here. So imagine that, again, I want to match this vertex into this vertex, okay? So I select this object, I press the V key, and you have to keep it pressed, and now I with the left button, I press now, and the destination. This is the destination, or this, or this, or this, or this, whatever. For example, this. And then I release the V key and the button of the mouse. So now, again, as you can see, these two vertex are in the exact same position, okay? So the snapping tools are going to be very, very useful, and you have to practice them because with them you're going to be sure that you are not going to have something very annoying gaps or overlaps between objects this is very annoying sometimes especially when we use the physics engine and sometimes well because we are going to see these uh, gaps between the objects when we play the game and this is not something uh, we like of course okay so now it's your turn you have to practice them okay because they are very, very important when we are creating complex scenes.